Well, hello there, and we're back in for a Monday on the Bet US College Basketball Show. Good to be back with you. I am merely the somewhat capable host, TJ Reeves. As we get ready to embark on another week here in the month of December, you see the handicappers, Matty Cox and also Corby Craig, are back here for a Monday. Guys, I spent uh, a day and a half in Atlanta in the ATL. My Buccaneers in the NFL world got a dramatic win. I'm in a good mood. I'm even in Buccaneer red here on the program. I'm in a good mood for that. Lots of college basketball. I took a lot of it in on Saturday and Saturday night. I didn't get to see as much on Sunday, although my Memphis Tigers did get a win. Some interesting things in the Big Ten, et cetera. So welcome for a Monday. Uh, Matty Cox, an opening thought or two off of the weekend and what we saw before we get into Monday. Yeah, well, thoughts and prayers for basketball in the Mitten State, TJ. Uh, Michigan State is reeling right now. Another loss mm. they took at the hands of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Meanwhile, their in-state rival, uh, Michigan, they have some coaching uh, rumors swirling and uh, in, in not a good way. There seem to be some uh, headbutting on the sidelines with who's in charge and what the pecking, pecking order is there. So after you know, kind of a, a promising and a, a ton of hype surrounding both teams to start, it's, it's interesting to look back now on both of those Big Ten teams, like many other Big Ten teams, uh, you know, the, the, it's sort of a tailspin, it, it seems like right now. Quick version, one or two things. What is wrong with Michigan State from what you see? They have obviously on paper a very talented team, but what's up? Uh, can't shoot, and I think there's a mental uh, block. There's just a mental blockage right now. I don't feel like that team plays with any sort of intensity or joy. Like I, I think the the strain of the expectations and the continuing disappointing is now culminating in like this continuing. Um, poor play, I guess. I don't know. It, it doesn't look good. It doesn't pass the eye test. And Izzo, Izzo has said that uh, typically they would go uh, bang this out in practices, physical practices, but it's just not the same anymore on what you're allowed to do and how you're allowed to do it. Yeah. Don't know. Corby, maybe you have a thought on that. Good to be with you on a Monday. Thoughts off the weekend. What stood out to you, my friend? Yeah, this Michigan State thing, I, I, I think they just don't have any, like, guys that are willing to take over i don't know if i'm lagging really bad it looks like i am but i don't know if they have any anybody that's just willing to take over like it, it just seems like they have one guy basically who uh will score if the team needs it and everybody else is just kind of like a system basketball player but yeah thanks for the weekend uh we were talking about heading into this weekend this is an auburn team who i was talking good about uh, and then they go lose to app state and then on saturday they score 104 versus indiana so um I, Auburn is a team that I, I think has a lot of upside. I talked about it on Friday, but uh, a team that goes 12 deep, that's really tough to play in, in most cases. So to score 104 versus Indiana, by all means, that's uh, a very impressive performance. We there. did touch on uh, Purdue and Alabama playing in Toronto. Purdue, tremendous performance to go back to the Big Ten. And, and Corby, you're obviously based in Alabama. Quick thought on that before we move along. Yeah, I think it's funny to watch Purdue games and, and like listen to the accolades and people complain about Zach Eady getting the free throw line so much. This is a team that goes through Zach Eady. Like, it, 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 like Alabama was complaining about the free throw differential. It, it's like you shot more threes than the rest of the nation combined. You're not going to get calls. And uh, like if you watch the foul <laughs> at the end of the game, they were complaining. Uh, guy jumped up and tried to block Eady down four with like 15 seconds. I mean, they slow mode the replay from the backboard cam. He grabbed both hands. Like, he grabbed each one of Eady's hands and pulled them down. It's like, that is – I was hate foul calls. That is a foul. A foul. I mean, right. You can't stop it. It's not It's not a bad call. It's just that Edie is so big and they know how to use him. So uh, Purdue, a, a tough force when uh, Zach Edie can get going. We also saw uh, Villanova bounce back and beat UCLA in a national TV game. How about Washington late Saturday night beats Gonzaga? Yep. So we had some interesting things from the weekend. Okay, off the show and off of week five, let's take a look at the records before we put things into motion for a light Monday. As you see off the show, we maintain a 15 game above 500 overall record. Uh, in fact, everybody on the show from a handicapping standpoint remains above the Mendoza line, which we love, including Matty Cox uh, leading the way right now. Uh, Percentage-wise, well, I don't know, maybe Kyle's leading the way percentage-wise, but uh, you're five games above 500. Matty Corby just above 500, and we are ready to go with Monday. Let, uh, again, it's a lighter day, but we are going to have some official plays, including we go all over the board, folks, on BetUS TV, live on Mondays at 11 a.m. Eastern time. That includes Howard and Penn, Penn out of the Ivy League, favored by five at home with a total of 149 in this one. So let's begin some discussion and get an official play, shall we? Both of you are up on this one. Matty Cox, start the discussion, please. What do we like and why 
uh, on a Monday game here at Penn. Yeah, I think on the surface, you look at this spot for Penn. They just played at Wells Fargo, uh, you know, in town, neutral sites where the Sixers play against Kentucky. And they had Kentucky shaking in their boots late in that game. Kentucky responded with a final counterpunch to put them away. But I think it was sort of another um, episode where we've seen this Penn team, very young, but well coached under Steve Donahue, you know, kind of improving rapidly as they kind of gear up for Ivy League play. It seems like a whack-a-mole team just because of the youth they have, and sometimes they don't always put all their chips in for the non-conference. They're all about winning the conference. That's the only path to the tournament. But I think this spot tonight against a Howard team who has been off for, I think, too long. Um, you know, So Penn's got a one-day quick turnaround, but I think it actually works in their favor. I think they catch a rusty Howard team that really has been up and down shaky. Their only real good effort, in my opinion, was that home game against Cincinnati and like, you know, an all time home hype spot. We've seen these HBCUs be great in those situations. So outside of that, I don't really I'm not scared of this Howard team, I guess. So I'm trusting the younger, uh, the more talented, the rapidly improving Penn Quakers, the red and blue, as they're more notably called under Donahue. Uh, and what I think is actually a better spot despite the uh, the short turn around here. So, yeah, minus five is what I laid. Uh, so go red and blue. Uh, interesting here for this one. You were mentioning how long they've been off. Am I correct that Howard's not played a game in December? They've been off since November the twenty eighth. Correct. That's been yep. a little. That's been a little bit rust factor. Probably a, probably a big deal. Corby Craig, I know you're going to have an official play on this as well. Uh, we say to the audience, live show. You may have seen Corby disappear, but like magic, he reappears. We hang in there live on Bet US TV. Thoughts on Penn and Howard, and what's the official play here? Yeah, it seems like the internet companies always wait till the worst moment to uh, reset the uh, the internet. But yeah, so I'm running on a hot spot. So if it gets choppy, I apologize in advance. But yeah, uh, you can get a 147 right now. Of course, sake of the show, like uh, sometimes we get better numbers, sometimes we get worse. I locked in the over 149 in this game. Uh, basically, in short, I think this this number is pushed a little too low due to the fact that Penn is 325th in the nation and Tempo on the offensive end of the glass. But if you've watched Penn, I don't think that that's due to the fact they want to play slow. It's due to the fact that they are a fundamental team who's going to run their offense. They're going to find good looks, um, and they're going to capitalize in most in most cases. That's why this number is so high. That's why they win games so frequently. The issue is Howard cannot guard Penn by any means. They're not the greatest defense uh, in any manner. Uh, backing Penn at home, I think Penn can shoot plenty well. Uh, so if, if Howard isn't isn't working through these defensive sets. I think that Penn scores much faster than market probably assumes. Uh, and this is a Howard team. I mean, we saw them give up 80 versus Hampton. We saw them give up, uh, they scored 92 in that game. So like, this is a team who can run and gun. They haven't played a game slower than 69 possessions basically all year. Uh, and they're expected 67 versus Penn. So uh, I, I think this plays more than like the 71 possession range with Penn being faster than, uh, I, mean, I mean, this is a Howard team that's 11th in the nation in, in defensive seconds on, or seconds per game on defense and uh it, it just goes to a testament they just don't play defense so i think pin scores to will I, I like the side here with matt uh but i took the over 149 for the sake of the show and we should make mention again we do this all the time but maybe you're new to the show that you had to lock that total in about an hour ago for all the graphics you see and everything that we're doing and the line has moved a couple of points and you were saying bemoaning is maybe a strong word you were None too Listen. pleased that this is probably going to land at like a 148 at tip time, right, for the total for this game. I will say we, uh, we've we had some pretty bad luck on the show with those. I think we're 0-4 with like uh, adjusted moves. Kyle, movement, lost a, right? Kyle lost one the other day. It, his his number one sake of show, but lost the, the number we locked in. But it's all variants. It'll, I mean, we, we're going to bet like probably another 600 games for the sake of the show. So I'm sure it will <laughs> it will even out at some point. I don't know if it'll be 600, but it will be a lot more. All right, Matty Cox is interested in the side. He says Penn Quakers, who played a 93-92 game and a loss to LaSalle recently in this building in the Palestra. They hung with Kentucky on Saturday. Now it's a Monday night. Matty Cox says, give me the side. Corby Craig says, give me points, points, points. Let's get over 149 because Howard doesn't guard anyone. So let's see what happens in that Monday matchup. Again, thank you for finding us. Hit the like button down below. Hit subscribe. Also, membership has its privileges. Hit the join button also. We are going to stick on Monday with an Ivy League team. This is Yale going to Quinnipiac and favored at Quinnipiac by nine with a total on the bet U.S. line of 146.5. Never let it be said that we won't go in the weeds to look for some different games. 
So let's get some discussion going and get an official play. Matty Cox, start us off again. What stood out to put this game? Again, it's a lighter card, but what stood out about this one to put it on the uh, sheet for an official play here? Yeah, I've trusted Yale a lot this year and, and probably too much so, but I think there's a pretty clear pattern in the way their results have panned out this year. They've been a really good first half team and they've had some issues closing out games late in the second half. Uh, none more famous than that debacle against Vermont we saw was in a week or yeah, basically last weekend. Um, they followed that up with kind of a disappointing uh, blunder late against Fairfield, another in-state rival like they have tonight against Quinnipiac. But I thought they were in control of that game. They outplayed Fairfield. And tonight they get a team basically very similar to Fairfield in terms of caliber uh, in the way they play in Quinnipiac. Again, another close by in-state rival where the home court shouldn't be worth all that much. I don't trust Yale closing out games at all right now. It seems like they have some issues with their backcourt. But just in terms of um, their talent and how well they play, um, you know, just in the free flowing uh, rhythm of the, you know, the first half and the early part of the second half, I think they're head and shoulders above what uh, what Quinnipiac brings to bear, uh, who barely sneaked by Navy last game. So I'm taking Yale here first half. Um, I wanted to lay the full game, but I just can't trust uh, the way this team has closed out games laying more than a touchdown. So I went in the first half angle here. Uh, trust James Jones. I know he's been a little bit uh, dicey in the non-con so far this year, but better team, no home uh, first half angle. We often talk about this, Corby. Quinnipiac is 7-2, and two, but who are the seven? When you're looking at the Coast Guard Academy, Central <laughs> Connecticut, uh, University of Albany, and uh, they've recently beaten Niagara and Navy, as Matty was talking. Quinnipiac took a loss to UMass, gave up 100 points in that game. So interesting uh, here that Yale is, is laying that significant a number. Matty explained his reasons why he's playing the first half. Any other thoughts, Corby, on this matchup before we move along? Yeah, when I first saw this game, TJ, I thought, man, Yale on the road during finals week, this is going to be, what what an awful spot for these. Like, usually kids, I don't worry too much about finals week. They, they If they're a basketball player, they usually have a, a nice scapegoat. But the good thing here is Yale's finals doesn't uh, they don't start until next week. So uh, they get they get the week of finals week off and then I guess next week they're going to uh, have their finals. So Yale's in a, in a good spot there. I mean you can say good. They they have to play Kansas next, so that's never fun. Uh, good luck. But yeah, for for the sake of this like I, I completely agree. I, I think this Yale team has some upside as well, which sounds crazy, but like Matt Noling got hurt a few games back. I actually don't know what happened to him, but November 26th, November 29th missed He's kind of I mean, not on minutes restriction, but he played 26 minutes, 27 and then 15 versus Colby Sawyer, which uh, I guess he didn't have to play very much. But this is a really good basketball player. I mean, this is a guy that has seen 37, 39 minutes before. Uh, so taking any time of him off of the court, like, at some point he's going to get healthy again and he is a, a menace. So uh, I really like this Yale team. It was my preseason. Like, I, I think that they have a pretty easy track into March just because I don't think the Ivy is very good this year. Um, and they're a team that you really don't want to face by any means. So I like this Yale team. Quinnipiac, uh, Matt alluded to it pretty quick, but they they probably shouldn't have beat that Navy team. They, uh, we, I think we've dogged on Navy more than any team this year. Navy is just not a good basketball school. And Quinnipiac, looked like they were basically the same team. It was 71-68 through six, uh, 75 possessions. So I'm not buying this team. I like this Yale team a lot. I lean towards uh, the dogs getting it done. Yeah, the days of David Robinson patrolling things for Navy and getting them into the Sweet 16 are gone. A while ago, uh, nonetheless, Yale uh, here is the play for Matty Cox. Let's lock Matt in. He says it's a first half play, Savages. Pay attention, Savages. It's a first half play laying four and a half on a Monday night at Quinnipiac. I know it's a light schedule. We'll talk a little bit about Tuesday. Get your live questions ready. That's always fun, the frivolity of the live Q&A here on BetUS TV. One more game to officially talk about. My goodness, have we had a 41-point spread on the show yet the first five weeks? I'm not sure if we've had a 41-point spread talked about. Maybe, maybe one or two. But certainly this will be interesting uh, here tonight with Gonzaga off a loss, coming right back to play Mississippi Valley State on a Monday night in December. Total 142.5, laying 41 tonight. Uh, Corby Craig, start the discussion here. You don't necessarily have to play this. What do we make of the Washington comeback? Again, this was late night Saturday. Might have got lost in the shuffle of the, what, the NBA play-in tournament was ending. Uh, we didn't have college football. Corby's got his social life, whatever, Saturday night. 
But Washington put on a heck of a show in the last 10 minutes of that game at home on their campus to beat Gonzaga. Now we're 48 hours later. Gonzaga is back. What do we think? Are they angry? What did you make of Saturday night? Yeah, TJ, I, uh, it sounds like I made a mistake on Saturday. I was I was making a joke on Twitter. Uh, I said there was 118 games, and like the whole day got done, and I was like, hey, if, like, if you're down, you still got time to triple down on a Gonzaga money line. I didn't I believe I did. This. I think I did see that social media post. Yeah. And was, how did that I, work out for the Savages? No, Not good. So here's the thing is I was fully joking. Like it was a joke on the fact that there's 118 <laughs> games. You don't have to bet the last game of the day. And I, I got probably 20 DMs after they lost. And then and then uh, Mark and Scott bring it up here. I, I need I need to preface everything I say for now on. But uh, no, I, I Gonzaga, I, it's the way I would have leaned. Don't get me wrong. I do think that they win that game more often than not. I was very surprised by a Washington team who uh, I didn't think had any chance in that in that situation. But no, headed into here, I think this is a Gonzaga team uh, that is like, yes, the players aren't grown enough, but this is a team that like has expectations. I don't think that they are really upset about that loss and like come beat around a Mississippi Valley team like some people would expect. Like I, I could see like an Iowa game uh, being in the 40s, but I just don't think Gonzaga really cares to run up, especially with Connecticut four days out. Uh, so true. I, I think this number is too big. I, I made it 37 and a half, but I'm not betting Gonzaga. I'm not betting Mississippi Valley State. I uh, I stay I, away I for you. Big, stay away, Matt Cox. 0 and 9 Mississippi Valley team. But again, who are the nine? When you're looking at Oklahoma, you're looking at UConn. My God, did Oklahoma look good against Arkansas Saturday? You're looking at Oklahoma, UConn. TCU, these are the losses. North Texas, Cal State, Northridge, Santa Clara, okay. Liberty, and now Gonzaga. And they've crisscrossed the country like you like to mention, all right? What do you make of this off the loss? Is Gonzaga looking to score 123 points? or what? I mean, what do you make of this, Matty? Yeah, a tough spot for Mississippi State. They, you're right, catching the, the Zags off a loss is certainly not ideal, especially when it's your second West Coast uh, trip so far. We're not even into December 15th yet. Um, also, not that any player means the world for Mississippi Valley State, but there's probably one or two that do matter. Uh, and Raekwon Brown was out last game for the Delta Devils. So if he's out tonight, man, I don't give much of a prayer. In, in principle, when I'm laying points in the upper 30s or higher, it's just sort of, uh, it, is this really advised? I think we had this breakdown with with the big man, Jeff, UConn against Mississippi Valley State, where UConn should have won by 50, 60. They just didn't really put their foot on the gas. You could see Gonzaga, who's not that deep, having a similar type of uh, of let up. You could also argue that because they don't have a ton of depth, um, that they can't really put like their C teamers in. I think it's going to be hard for them to really take their foot off the gas. Um, and again, coming off that loss, they'll be angry today for sure. And that's a team that can put up 120 in a hurry on anyone. So. I guess I lean this way, but I, in principle, I don't like laying points above 36 as a favorite. And it is a ton of points for sure. Gonzaga only 5 of 18 from 3 in the loss to Washington late Saturday. How much of that was Washington's defense? They are back at home. Are they going to light up the Delta Devils uh, tonight? We gave you some good conversation on that. Any thought uh, from either of you that maybe the first half play, and I don't know what the, the first half number is, probably 25 or more, is, a, is the first half play even a glance there? I was looking at um, Mississippi Valley State first half team total. I know, and in, in, absolutely in the weeds, but it's a number just so art. Like, it's it's awfully low. It's uh, 22 right. and a half, juice minus 140. Uh, <laughs> I mean, did you, did, did you guys see the uh, – North Dakota State score last night or yesterday? Did not. They, did not. Yeah, that was not fair. That was they unfair. Won that was uh, yep. it, I don't Against think that, that happens Against whom? Were they, were they playing like a hockey power play and the other team only had four players? 107 to 14? Honestly, I, it doesn't matter who it was. If you only score 14 points, like, I, the, the school only had an enrollment of 94 people. But, like, uh, at 22 points is way too low to assume a, an actual real life basketball team's going to score in, in the first half. So I can't lay that low of a number, but we lean towards Mississippi Valley state under in, in some capacity here. Okay. Some discussion there on uh, Gonzaga. That's the school oh. TJ. Sorry. What, what is it again? Oak Hill Christian Trevor just Oak put it Hill in the chat. Christian. Okay. And they, uh, who, uh, got to work on the offense. I, I would think one a player had half their points. Okay. There's That's one seven. way to spin it. If you were looking for a positive, you had a scorer score half the points. You don't have to come clean that it was seven of the 14. All right, to questions and answers here on the program. Let's get into that. You see again that we're live here at 11 a.m. 
Monday through Friday. Again, it's a lighter day today. Exams that are going on, so you're not going to see the best of the of the matchups. You had a lot of that on Saturday and some of it on Sunday. Kyle is watching us. Says any thoughts on Columbia back to the Ivy League? Columbia laying two with uh, fairly Dickinson tonight. Either one of you with anything on that? We've already talked about a couple of Ivy League games. Any thoughts, guys? Yeah, I kind of like the over. It got bet up a couple of points. I think it's at 160 right now. I don't know, Corby, where your numbers have this at, but just anecdotally, both teams offensively skewed, um, and I think both willing to get into a track meet, especially for Columbia, coming off a game where they got stuck in the mud playing Lafayette, who plays at one of the slowest, most you know, grimiest tempos in the country. Uh, and FDU, you know, very much like they were built last year, all offense, defense optional. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's a shootout. I think 160, actually. Oh, it's a big number. I think it could be 165, 166. Corby, anything on that, or you want to move on? Yeah, I'm at 162.2, so I, I agree. And and for my numbers to even get that high is impressive. I, usually there's a, a ceiling capacity that you can model out. So 162, I, I would lean towards the over, even though I'm not that far off of the total. C. Vaughn is watching us. Thank you. Uh, says Delaware just beat Xavier. Robert Morris is only Division One win. They're the home team is against Fairleigh Dickinson, who we were just talking about. Any thoughts on this? And I'm seeing a bet U.S. number like four or four and a half that Delaware's favored by on the road. Anything here, Corby? Yeah, I had the under this morning. Let's see what the number is right now. Forty-two. Yeah, it's it's fallen down. So uh, at this point, nothing. Um, I made it one forty-four and a half. It opened one forty-eight. So this has fallen down six points since open. Um, yeah, yeah. Lean towards lean towards an under. Delaware, um, pretty good team. Robert Morris at, at some point last year was a really good basketball team. It seems like they've kind of um, cliff dive off off the uh, deep end. But hmm. I have them rated pretty low at this point. Yeah, Bobby right, Moe, TJ, in. they uh, just have not had their full compilation of players all year. Now, I think they're the closest they've been to healthiest uh, at any point right now. But I'm still not looking to uh, to bet on a due horse, as they say, or catch a falling knife. I I guess I lean toward Robert Morris on the number, but um, I certainly think that betting Delaware seems like kind of a square side with the fact that Bobby Moe is just at their absolute base valley of price, given that they're now healthy, it looks like on paper. Quickly, we'll go to a couple more. And by the way, fire in some questions here. We're scraping we're scraping on the Monday card. Get creative, Savages, with some questions, and we'll get to a couple of those before we're done. Uh, M. Caesar says, hey, on the New Orleans-San Francisco game, what about the under? Got a total of 148, it looks like. Any thought on the under in that game from either one of you? That is, the, I believe, the last game of the night tonight, San Francisco's uh, War Memorial Gym. Yeah, the issue there is if you've ever watched New Orleans play, uh, defense is as optional as it comes. Uh, it's one of those teams that, like, I, I really don't want to bet under, sir. Matt, anything or move on on San Francisco hosting the privateers of New Orleans? San Francisco is 6-3. and three. Yeah, it's been bet up, so some people disagree with the under. Spent, but I guess now is even uh, would be your best time to come in on the under if you like that way. I like that for the under. You had Nola coming off a game at San Jose two nights ago. Could be a little tired playing 48 hours later. Um, but San Francisco tends to run it up on teams if they can. Uh, they have depth. They can score it. So I, I don't know. I think it's a stay away for me. Uh, that one dude, we'll skip to his question, is says early game thoughts. The early game he's talking about is Texas A&M Commerce and Northern Colorado. We go all over the board. Commerce and Northern Colorado at Commerce. That's an 11 a.m. Central Time game coming up at the top of the hour, noon Eastern Time. You are a big-time degenerate if you're looking for an angle on this game. That's me saying that. Do either of you two have anything on that? I don't, Corby. This is a big step. Market loves uh, Northern Colorado here. It opened around pick. They've been up to two and a half, three. I actually kind of lean to the Lions, the host uh, Texas Commerce uh, boys there, Jared Von Rosenberg. But I nothing to, to lay. One of those situations, TJ, both teams have been off for over a week. So um, I think a lot of uncertainty on both sides. Again, just not a lot of interest getting involved when you have that much volatility on both parts of the handicap. And we've talked about Commerce. I think Jeff Nadu talked about them one time because they had – uh, a game where they hung in, I think, what they hung in with uh, St. Joe's and only they lost beat, by three. They beat St. Joe at St. Joe, which looks well, pretty good right now. they did beat St. Joe's. Yeah. That's right. They beat St. Joe's by three. 
What are you getting on Monday at 11 a.m. local time coming up here? That's the that's the big question, especially as you pointed out. This is why you need good a stay away analysis here with both of these teams off for the last week. As Matt just gave you that nugget, what are you getting here? Not sure that we know what we're getting uh, here on that. Uh, what else? Let me go backwards to Easy Baby 1988 says thoughts on Jacksonville, South Carolina State. Either one of you got anything on the Jacksonville Dolphins? Yeah, I do. I'm going to vent real quick. Sorry, Corby. I I love Jacksonville this year. They've just (laughs) continuously disappointed me. Um, And South Carolina State has burned me the other direction. So I I made this number way higher than what it was. I think it's sitting at, it's got to be up to six now, closer to where I'm in. I still had this over a touchdown uh, in favor of the road Dolphins. But um, I've just been wrong on both teams. So I'm trying to, you know, humble myself and stay away. I think categorically the more talented team is Jacksonville. But uh, Eric Martin seems to be a pretty good coach in South Carolina State. There, they've done some pretty feisty. They put together some pretty feisty efforts so far this year. Corby, anything on the viewer question about Jacksonville, South Carolina State coming up tonight at seven Eastern time? Yeah, I made it four and a half. Um, so it's it looks like it's kind of steamed past my number. The interesting thing about Jacksonville is I this is a team that's been so slow for years. They're I mean three fifty six in tempo. 2022, 361 last year, and now they're 218th in tempo. So uh, my my number probably wants to regress them, and, and it doesn't look like it needs to by any means. Like if you watch these games, they they just they play fast now. All right, TJ, question here: You guys uh, are are always obviously looking at trends, looking at teams. I want a thought from both of you: Is there somebody you've got your eye on right now that maybe the market hasn't caught up to? They're covering, you like what it is that they're covering, and you're starting to value them. Anybody got one that comes to mind right away? I see the grin, the Cheshire Cat grin from Corby Craig. You got one? I've got, I've got one, and the reason I grin is they play today. Uh, I have not bet it yet. I'm waiting. Also, I have an exact opposite, which we talked about Friday. Okay. The exact opposite is uh, high point. We talked about this game. I, I bet the over on Friday. It didn't go over, but I, in, the, in this spiel was like, man, this is a team that, like, uh, they've jumped 150 spots at Ken Palm. Everybody loves it. Like it was literally the question in every chat on Friday. It's like, I, are they 22 points better than basically any team? And uh, right. they barely they barely win that game. So I think high point is on their as they're on their absolute high. You could probably sell off some high point, which would not be fun because they definitely. But want that's to run not the score. team you were smiling about. What was the, the Cheshire grin about. for? is is every projection is going to be the same for this team i don't think that even my numbers can get low enough the stonehill skyhawks tj listen <laughs> market is just going to copy ken palm no one knows enough about this team they're going to say that this team plays uh a, let's see what stonehill's pace is right now 135th in the nation last week that was 50th in the nation no one knows they haven't played enough basketball to really know they've only won one game as versus army they're always down like no one knows how to price this team at all I have put myself through the misfortune to watch them play too much basketball, and they don't want to play fast at all, TJ. I, I, I really like betting unders in Stonehill. Uh, the issue is, I mean, they've gotten run through. I mean, like, they their defense is miserable, but it's it's due to who they've played. They're 1-10. Yeah, they, they are, they are they, 1-10. I understand. Uh, Damien is the viewer that had the question, so Damien is wanting to know about this game too, so we'll put Damien's question up. He was asking, are you going to back the under? in this game that's what you're looking at just because yes. of stonehill being almost an underplay automatically yeah so the big thing about college basketball going like one like mini spiel is um like there's so many teams that usually market just does the exact same thing every game especially like these teams that nobody knows so stonehill got bet up four points two games ago to the total bet got bet up four points last game um, so I'm just, I'm just sitting waiting. I'm I'm gonna bet the 150. I'm gonna bet the 149. I don't care what it is, uh, but I I think this probably hits 151 before uh, six o'clock. So just gonna wait as long as I can. Um, I think the people who are betting unders here are just wrong. So uh, I, or overs are wrong. So I will take an under at some point today. Stonehill makes the show at one and ten. Um, Matt Cox, is there a team that you've got your eye on right now with a trend of the first five weeks to go on? Yeah, I love New Mexico. I feel like that's not really a trendy pick. Everyone kind of knows the, the cat's out of the bag there. But they're at 33 right now in Kempom, um, and they actually seem to be undervalued from both the analytics but also the fact that they've been without uh, Jamal Mashburn, who is you know perceived to be one of their better players. But I think the unseen part of this group is just how deep they are at guard, and they're actually probably better without Mashburn. As crazy as that's saved with how good Donovan Dent's been, the sophomore stud, 
and they have some rookies. Uh, True Washington has been an absolute beast. Um, so, yeah, so unlike Richard's dad, Rick, who has major issues with his team at St. John's right now, uh, the younger Patino has it rolling with an awesome cast of characters uh, down there in Lobo land. So, yeah, I love New Mexico. I think even at 33, they look like they're at their ultimate peak. I think there's more room to run with this team. Yeah, Boston College put it on St. John's on Sunday night, and Rick Patino's bemoaning his team's defense. Happy holidays, everybody, in the St. John's practices upcoming with the defense. <laughs> Good luck a, with that. DJ. Yes, sir. I got a. I have a confusing uh, question of the day. Is uh, Nadu and I both sit on Houston to win the championship at twenty to one? Or, I mean, mm-hmm. after ten, it's very early. Don't get me wrong, but after ten games, like, how is this team ever twenty to one? They were. They had the ninth, like ninth highest odds. They. I mean, this was a top three team going into the year. They. They. They look dominant. So, uh, feeling pretty good about that. Uh, I know they squeezed Jacksonville uh, or Jackson State on the uh, on the weekend. But could one of the questions be level of competition? And they're about to be in the Big 12, a much tougher league than what the American Athletic Conference has been. We should give it a little time. Should we not before we're just anointing them right now in December? Should we not yeah, give it a little time? I mean, 10 games definitely isn't enough. But to add 20 to 1, that's like implying, what, a 2% chance to win the championship? 3% chance? They definitely... At all aspects, no matter what, right. I've had a, a greater than 3% chance. Matt Cox, do you have any thought on whether the grind will get to Houston this go-around in the Big 12, a much tougher basketball league? No, I think it's going to help them. I think it's going to prepare them for, um, you know, they'll be in some closer games more consistently throughout the year. And I think when they get to the tournament and they get in those kind of high-leverage situations, they'll be more prepared, I think, more battle-tested as the cliche narrative goes because they've upgraded conferences. So, um, yeah, you could argue it's going to maybe wear on them, but I think the way they play is actually wears on other opponents more than it does on them. So I think it's a, a net positive. And Kelvin Sampson's, like, really echoed that. He's like, he can't wait to be tested um, you know, for two, three months throughout the year, where like them and Gonzaga are always the two teams that no one really cared about for two months. And then they like, okay, now the tournament's here. We have to see what they can do against the big boys because we didn't see them do anything during their conference, um, you know, the conference swoon, I guess. So, yeah, I'm, I think it's a net positive for them going forward. Damien is pointing out a trend for what it's worth that he thinks is correct is Rutgers is seven and one against the under here, seven and one on unders this year for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Had the game the other night with uh, with Seton Hall in the Battle of New Jersey. Uh, all right, so there you go. We gave you a little more on that. With that, let's take a look at what the guys officially have here on a light Monday. There will be uh, two games, two plays on the first game. Corby's on the over, 149, and Matt is on the side with Penn. And then in the Yale game with Quinnipiac, pay attention, kids. Matt Cox says Yale first half number, lay the four and a half in the first half. Again, it's going to kind of be a lighter week with final exams, et cetera. We'll see some bigger name programs like Duke, like Tennessee, and others in action on Tuesday. Any other thoughts here? Corby Craig, any thoughts before we're gone? Yeah, there's a uh, common theme that you should lay off while kids are taking finals. Just uh, don't bet, don't. But I think it's the wrong the wrong route. Like it, it just is another variable that people don't know. So you're going to see high variance in these games. You've seen the high variance all year. Uh, I saw an Auburn game that that lost to the total by 40 points, TJ. So I don't think the market knows as much as people give it credit for. Uh, find find the teams you like and, and continue to bet them. It is amazing though, Matt Cox. Just as a general comment, that the odds makers at Bet US and everywhere else more times than not are like right on the number or close to the number. That's why I keep saying to everybody when you go out to Las Vegas, I don't know the last time that either one of you were there recently, but in the last 15 or 20 years, you know these billion with a B dollar complexes that they're building everywhere? They're not building that because they don't know how to do totals and spreads. They're building that because they do know about the total and about the spread by and large for the most part. It's usually pretty close. I'm off my soapbox. Matty Cox, anything in closing for a Monday show before we're done and good? No, I'd say enjoy the uh, the slight uh, break in the onslaught of, of schedule. Um, this is probably one of the lowest, kind of slowest weeks of the season. So uh, it's a long grind, and I'm going to definitely try and uh, decompress to some degree. So big one on Saturday coming up, but in terms of Monday through Friday, we're, I think we're in the teens of games every day. So uh, I will enjoy it for sure. 
But we certainly gave you a lot on this show. By the way, my like button to viewer uh, ratio right now is still like four to one. Viewers to like, hit the like button. If you're sitting in here, right, I'll sit here for another minute or two and, uh, and, and we'll talk about a couple of other things if the likes crank up. Let's let's crank the light. I mean, we'll sit here for another couple of minutes if the likes will crank beyond where they are TJ. right now. What you had a hot date? Is that what you said? It's it's no, ten thirty in the morning. A, I got a game we can talk about. Oh, you have a game. Uh, well, you yeah, know what? Yeah, yeah. Don't talk. Well, hold on. Don't talk about the game yet until the like buttons crank up. I'm watching live right now in the live chat. If you want him to talk about the other game, do that. I've got a question for Matty Cox about a team that I'm interested in, maybe even in still in a futures play right now. But until I see some more like buttons, I'm not going to let Corby talk about his game or I'm not going to ask anything else for the next minute or two here. I'm not going to sing for you, but I'm just saying that uh, we got too many people watching and not enough likes being hit. All right, there we go. We're getting a little better. I want to see a few more like buttons. Keep hitting it. Come on. Some people are encouraging it in the live chat that have already hit it. Uh, I've seen 10. I'm like an auctioneer. Do I see 15 more likes? <laughs> because I, I've seen 10 here in the last few minutes before we'll have Corby talk about the game. Uh, the team that I am interested in, in a futures play, I don't know what Baylor is now, but Baylor has looked good enough. I don't know what they were at the beginning. I don't know if it's that much worse. What What is Baylor? Either one of you can look at that. Give me an answer on Baylor as a futures play to win the whole thing. I'm talking about not just Final Four, but to be a national championship team. What do we have that at right now? Do either one of you have that? What are you saying, Craig? 40 to 1? 30? If it's 30 yeah, to I, 1 or 40 to 1, I'd be interested in that right now. I, I think 31 to, or better. I, I'm with you, TJ. I, I love this team. I feel like the, the cat's out of the bag with them. Just They dominated Seton Hall um, on Tuesday, which feels like a – well, I guess it was a week ago at this point. Right. Um, the, the game against Auburn, Florida, I think they've proved that they can you know, run with, beat you know, top-end caliber teams – um, and just they have that upside, you're right, with Jacoby Walter, he might be the best freshman in the country. They actually have some brawn up front at the rim uh, with Missy, not to be confused with Messi, but just like an actual rim protector, which is what they missed last season. Um, so, yeah, I, I like this team. And Ray J. Dennis, coming over from Toledo, kind of a veteran, grizzled, uh, you know, heady guard there to run the show. I, I like the makeup. I'm with you. It just it comes down to price. Anything under 30, I think I'd probably wait. You could see them maybe taking some losses in Big 12 play and actually get a better price, more of a buy low. But right now, bet, at 8 oh, hard to find a cheap number out there. Bet U.S. is 25-1 to 1 for Baylor to win the national championship. Corby, any yeah, quick I'd, thought I'd on wait. that? I'd wait. You'd wait on that. Yeah, Corby, any I, quick I, thought I, on that or move on to your pick? I think you can wait on that. Uh, I mean, they have Duke on the 20th. I mean, they'll probably mm -hmm. beat Duke at, at current. Uh, so you'll probably get a worse price. But if they were to lose that Duke game, maybe uh, buy some. Let's hear it Christmas. for the audience. We got 25 more likes since I brought it up. Who says hey, that we can't encourage you to hit the like button? Now give them one more thing, one more nibble before we're gone. Corby Craig. Yeah, I will say just on these uh, futures real quick, you can still get, let's see, you can still get Houston at 16 to 1, which I just talked about. A, I mean, we got 20 preseason, 16, like, I still think you're at a really good price. I, yeah, they're 16 I, I to this, one on the bet US yeah, line. Absolutely. I think they're one of two, if not the best team in the nation. So, uh, plenty, plenty fine price for me. And again, there. we're talking yeah. about to win the whole thing, not just make the final four. We're talking about national championship value. Give your little live play real quick, and then we're gone. What else did you have? Tidbit for the All audience. Right. Yeah, give me a uh, live button, TJ. Not TJ. Uh, oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, Kevin. A live button is coming here. I did not know this. Oh, this is new. Crooked, little crooked, live little button didn't quite make it under you. That looked like a border live button. That could be me. I don't know what I'm doing yeah, we'll, live. We'll give but it anyway, together. We'll live give it together. Core, there he is. Live there it is. Corby right. Craig we're gonna go the, We're going to the Samford versus Alabama A&M first half oh. under 74 and a half <laughs> points. What? I know. Wait, it's, say that again. Samford Alabama a &M, and you want first half. Yeah, first half under, 74 and a half. Um, I think that's the number we can get. Let me know in the uh, chat or, or behind the scenes. But right. 74 and a half. Um, yeah, so this is Sanford team who I think has plenty of guard play to be able to score the basketball. I mean, we've seen for quite some time. They play an extremely fast pace. Um, but I don't know if y'all watched Alabama a and play basketball. They're not very fast. They're... <laughs> They're not very good. Right. <clears throat> Sanford just Sanford's been off for a week. Uh, it's finals week in Sanford. I'm not. I'm not too worried uh, about them trying to just come out of the gate hot. 18th in the nation in tempo. That's why we get this number so high. Alabama A&M 
cannot shoot the ball to save their entire life. They're 360th in the nation in effective field goal percentage, 359th in three-point percentage. That's 22.9% as a team, TJ. Mm. This team cannot score. The only place that they score is the free throw line. The free throw line, which Sanford does not give a lot of. Uh, they have in games when they played a Louisiana team, a Purdue team, a VCU team. But you see them play Alabama State, and they, they held Alabama State to 67 points. That was 27 in the first half. If you scored 27 here, um, I don't think this number gets even close. Uh, give me the under in the first half. Great stuff. Uh, there, Somebody was actually asking for thoughts on laying Sanford in the 18 and a half. My thought is do something else. Uh, all right, so uh, good stuff here today, guys. Well done on a lighter card. Thank you to the audience as well. The number one fingers are up here. Thank you for the audience hanging in. We'll be back here Tuesday to do this again at 11 a.m. all the way through the college basketball season. We're here for you on BetUS TV. Nice job, Corby Craig. Nice job, Matt Cox. Kevin, everybody behind the scenes at BetUS TV, excellent job with the show. We thank you for watching. Thanks for joining in. Don't forget to like our video. If you don't want to miss our next show, make sure to ring our bell and subscribe. For all our sports content, head to BetUSTV.com. See you next time.